live. Let's do this. We are live. Welcome everyone to our Success Mastermind group for Friday, the 8th of April, 2022. John Lavinia here with you on a fun Friday. Hence my, I never wear white. Okay. This is a Tommy Bahama. I used to buy a lot of Tommy Bahama stuff uh, when I lived in Tucson and I got on a Tommy Bahama kick and this is one of the remaining shirts. Hardly ever wear it. So it's like new because you know, white. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, actually I look kind of tan when I wear white, right? Cause you can see the color differential there, but, um, good to see you. I have, uh, oh, we have some good stuff going on here in the mastermind group. I do have, uh, one other thing on the calendar for today, which is be heard at 6 PM Eastern U S time. I'm going to be here for that. Uh, we did have some great sessions this week in terms of other things. In addition, of course, to our general session, uh, we had Networking Magic with Glenn Henderson on Wednesday night. Catch the replay if you were not on that. If you're a member here, obviously, that's a members only thing. You got to talk about um, really leading with your passion. It's really a, a good thing. Uh, Mandy Anderson hosted Books for Britain on Tuesday. We had, uh, let's see, we had uh, Ivier Barnabas with uh, Corporate Curios and uh, yeah. And of course, our book study groups on Monday night. This week, by the way, we're going to be wrapping up Pitch Anything by Oren Claff um, on Monday night. And they're going to be switching over to uh, The Gap and the Gain by um, uh, co-authored uh, by two guys. And um, anyway, that was a book that's suggested by one of our members, Virginia, who is not here with us right now. But anyway, um, good to see you all. Now, since it is Fun Friday and I'm dressing in tropical wear, in this case, just a different color polo shirt because it's easy for me, because just before I got on here, I had another meeting. And just before that other meeting, I was making a screen for a window, custom sized screen. You guys know you get you can get uh, screen making kits and you can customize the screen for any window size. Now, you know, right? Uh, 15 bucks at Home Depot, plus, you know, get a roll of whatever kind of screen you want and bam, hacksaw, miter box, done. Um, so now we've got a nice screen, so the bugs, can't get in when we open this window. Um, but while I was doing all that and going to the gym and doing every, everything else that I do with my mornings, I, um, I wound up uh, digging in on, uh, on a lecture, an audio book that I am, uh, man, I'm very glad I did because uh, what I wanted to talk with you about today, oh, wait, it's fun Friday. So we got to have a joke. What's the joke? Um, Hmm. Anybody got a joke? Or are you going to rely on me for this one today? Let's see if I can come up with a joke real quick. Uh, I can't. <laughs> I can't. My brain's going in so many different directions. I can't come up with a joke. Well, maybe now that, uh, you know, Virginia and Lindsay are here, maybe they've got a joke to tell us. So if you got a joke, uh, let me know. But here, here's the thing that I was that I was doing this morning as I was going through my routine, taking my daughter to her class, and going to the gym and, you know, doing all the things that I do. I was feeding into my mind uh, some great reminders, some things that I, um, I deserve to be reminded about again and again. And, uh, and one of those things, which we, we kind of touched on a little bit yesterday, um, we talked about the complete picture, right? Was that yesterday? Like when we communicate, when we use, when we use the, the law of vibration, right? And we're, we're getting in you know, into a goal achievement mindset is that we don't want to be vague about this because um, if you're vague, well, then, I mean, would you, would you send somebody a message that was just, you know, random words taken out of the dictionary or something? Probably not, right? You'd want to convey something of meaning, a complete idea, right? So we talked about that yesterday. Uh, but the other thing that, that comes up with that which we didn't talk about yesterday, is this whole idea of worthiness. Or what some people have coined the word uh, deservability. <laughs> the word is actually worthiness. But the, um, but the idea that, that maybe we can't or shouldn't or, or um, it would somehow be wrong for us to be so bold as to make these demands upon life that we should you know, be, do, and have more. Who are we to do that? Who are we to do that? Who are we to reach? Who are we to make a spectacle of ourselves? Who are we to stand head and shoulders above mass mediocrity? Well, hopefully you know who you are, 
but right in there is is the question right or the consideration it, it's been we've been admonished throughout the ages to you know know thyself okay well that's cool how many of us can claim to actually have that knowledge I, i've been working on that for some decades now and i <laughs> i don't claim to have arrived right so uh, I see here, Missy put in the chat, who are they to not reach higher? So there's the, there's the di dichotomy, right? Thank you, Missy, that's beautiful. Who are they to not reach higher? So I just had this meeting with uh, a bunch of new entrepreneurs and they, um, one of the questions that I like to ask uh, in using a variety of words is uh, what do you want, right? So I don't ask it that way usually, but, um, I get to hear all kinds of different responses. And a common one, a common one is, well, I don't want to limit myself. No limits. Sky's the limit, right? And whatever other cliches to avoid the question. And so now I get to observe that, right? I get to observe the, um, you know, the ambiguity of an answer like that. And I get to remind people uh, often that when we when we set goals and targets and all this, we're not setting limits, we're setting standards. Standards, I have standards. Now, sadly, most people lower their standards back to this idea of worthiness. If we have, if we have won and lost in life and who hasn't, right? So we've got wins and losses. But if we have allowed ourselves to fixate our attention on the losses, we tend to lower our standards lower the thermostat, adjust the autopilot, downward, you know, that, that sort of thing. Uh, in other words, the self-image is one of less worthiness than, than we assumed or accepted uh, yesterday before that, that um, blunder or whatever occurred that was not pleasing to us. And then we lower our standards again, because after all, here's more opportunities to fail and then lower them again. And the next thing you know, you're, you know, serving up the coffee at 7-Eleven or something. I mean, what? What? So here's the message. Never lower your standards. Another way to say that is to expect to reach every goal you set. Regardless of, uh, you know, this or that circumstance or uh, I was however right or wrong you were about how much time it will take to do that, which is a guess. Uh, you don't have a crystal ball right? But never lower your standards. I deserve to remember that. Especially, here's the thing, especially in lean times, right? So you've got some operation and you're expecting the statistics to be up here somewhere, but they're still down here. And, and so, oh, maybe I'm shooting too high. I don't want to disappoint myself. I mean, that's some great justification right there, right? That's some great uh, rationalization. I don't want to disappoint myself. So let me just not expect so much. It's another way of say, saying, let me lower my standards, or maybe I'm not worth it. But oh my goodness, as Missy just pointed out, who are we to, I mean, how dare you? How dare you say that you're not worthy? I mean, if you're a conscious thinking person, you're already, you're already like way above what I would say most people um, are doing with their lives, sitting around waiting for something to happen to them, watching the news or what? And so part of the reminder of, of uh, you know, keeping your standards and, and not lowering them and knowing that you're worthy, right? Part of the reminder of that is, is remembering that well, as we've talked about many times, that, that you're, you're quite causative, right? Even if, even if what we're causing is our own disbelief and our own, our own lower sense of self-esteem, like who, who is cause for that? We see a lot of times people don't, don't consider that. They don't consider, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I am the cause of my own lack of expectations for my own achievement or uh, my own emotional state around, you know, whatever uh you know circumstances uh, have befallen me but the idea that that this is going to happen to you or not in other words that your effect that uh, you know some lady luck is going to smile or not smile upon you <laughs> see so we, things don't happen to us we make them happen or not 
And so when I think about some of the people who, who I look to for inspiration, who have achieved, uh, you know, what I think are spectacular things, uh, none of them, none of them have, have had just like this, this cakewalk through life and gone through unscathed and, and, and didn't have, you know, lean times or, or uh, uncongenial circumstances. And isn't it interesting that we can go back through history and read all kinds of, you know, writings and philosophy and whatever about, uh, you know, persistence and, and perseverance and, uh, you know, like even in like getting into biblical, like here's the person who got through the, the suffering and the sacrifice and, and all this, and then, um, you know, realized success. These stories just keep showing up. So who are you to belittle yourself and, and think, well, you know, I mean, these other people, you know, they're special or something. I mean, they wrote about them in the book, you know, and, and I, I'm just, you know, I'm just me, you know. Well, every single person, here's the, here's the punchline, everybody. Every single person who we can look to and say, wow, they really did it. They all had those same thoughts. <laughs> they all got it. Right. They just got through it. Persevere through severity. Persevere. Right. So if you if you've had one or many, why have you forsaken me moments? Know that you're not alone. In fact, I was told some years ago when I was seeking to uh, to make sense out of this whole life thing uh, is that, um, well, God doesn't give you anything that you can't handle. To which I could reply, well, I wish you didn't think so, so highly of me. <laughs> okay. But perhaps the better consideration is, well, rather than, rather than um, you know, wishing for ease and comfort, perhaps intending uh, rather to be strong, to meet the challenge, to, to persevere, to, to demonstrate Yes, I can handle this. Ease, comfort. I mean, it's cool. Ease and comfort sounds nice, but I'll tell you because I'm wearing a Bahamian, Bahamian shirt right now, um, and I've been to the Bahamas, and I've been to all around the world, and Hawaii, and Fiji, and all these different places, and I've drank from the coconuts, and I've had ease and comfort. Uh, from time to time, and it's freaking boring. I mean, it just how many coconut drinks can you drink? I mean, it's cool. I like it. I got coconut water in the fridge right now. It's good stuff. It's potassium, right? It's tasty. I love coconut. Just in case you guys ever want to get me a present, anything with coconut. Coconut is like is like crack for me. I love coconut <laughs> as a drug free guy. Coconut is the hard stuff, you know, that's like, yeah. Um. <laughs> but drink your damn coconut juice while you're, you know, while you're doing some work or something. Right. Even even with the, um, you know, here's the the ease, the luxury, the, you know, the, the luxury suite at the resort. Uh, nice. Nice. But I'm there to work, too. Right. I mean, we're doing an event. I'm, I'm on the payroll. I'm speaking tomorrow. Right. So stuff like that. It's like, do you ever go to a party? And maybe this is just me. I don't know. You guys can tell me. Uh, do you ever go to a social gathering? And you, you uh, find yourself seeking uh, ways to help. Hey, can I put out the casserole for you? Did you need help with the buffet table? Right. Or stuff like that. Uh, and if so, perhaps uh, you you share my uh, tendency toward production, you know, workaholic, you know, kind, kind of a thing, right? What can we do to improve uh, or to help, right? Or to cause increase, okay? And again, this isn't an argument that you should never relax, uh, but I'm constantly looking for how can I be purposeful? How can I advance myself and others in whatever situation it happens to be? So here's a time for fun and leisure which is cool, but I, I also seek to do something purposeful in that time. Maybe this is a problem for me. I don't know. I don't, I don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about it, so I, I guess it's fine. But 
uh, but willingness to uh, and and eager to participate. So, like right now, if uh, if if uh, Virginia was hosting a cookie party or something, and I was a guest, I would also uh, be happy to help her carry the cookie trays and perhaps rinse out the you know the mixing bowl or something. It's just, in fact, Virginia had a comment about me. We got together in Vegas. She's like, John, you know, one thing I didn't know about John, he's actually kind of quiet. Like, unless he's on stage, right? Like, here I am giving you some, some thoughts and, and uh, I'm animated to whatever degree. But if I'm not doing that, like see, we were sitting around at a, a fine steakhouse in, in uh, Las Vegas and um, steaks were good. Not amazing, but good. Good. I'm spoiled because, you know, living in Arizona for so long and other parts of the country where you guys have great barbecue and stuff like that. Um, but uh, but I, I don't know. Uh, got mistakes. Good. Yeah. Do you guys have a good time today? Yeah. Like I uh, I'm not going to launch into like some lecture on you know philosophy or something. We're just sitting around eating steak. So. So, yeah, I tend to listen when I'm when I'm not running my mouth. I'm, I'm listening. Which is is great, you know. Material, by the way, guys, just go around, go around life and 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 listen. You want material? You want to be a public speaker or something? You want to do YouTube videos? Just listen to people. It's, it's fascinating, fascinating stuff. <sighs> Back to the idea. All right. So let's say you are listening to people um, and. And now you are not comparing in, 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 in judgment, but now uh, making decisions for yourself about how do you want to show up when other people, assuming they do, listen to you? How do you want to show up? Missy and I have had some time on this, right? Where, uh, where she's become very conscious, not to lean on you too much, Missy, but very conscious of... I was showing up this way and just, I recognize for myself, I don't need somebody else to tell me, but I recognize for myself that look at this transformation. Why? Because of the inputs, because of what we're listening to and interpreting in such a way. I mean, look, if you got all right, two, two different scenarios, uh, one is, uh, here's an easy one, reading a book. So the author is communicating to you uh, about something hopefully resourceful, right? Unless you're just reading, um, you know, romance novels or something, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, here is here's input. You're listening and you're interpreting and you're digesting, accepting or rejecting, okay, and interpreting it in the way through your own filters. Now, here's a different scenario. You're listening to the the total degraded person at the supermarket screaming at their kids as they load candy into the shopping cart, right? So, and you're interpreting that again, through your own filters, you do have the ability to accept and reject. Okay. I'm not saying get into a state of judgment here. Okay. But yeah, this stuff that the author wrote, I mean, that's, that's kind of good stuff. You know, I'm not sure about that thing, but you know, I'll try that one on That, that sounds great. This, I'm not going to try that on. I reject. Okay. And you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not your, your Lord or something, right. You have your life live and let live and whatever, but, uh, but no, that's, that's not my way. I'm not showing up like that. So we all have discernment on that. And, and, when we, and when we can see others and how they occur to us, whether it's the written word or the, the social demonstration, um, we can decide how we're gonna show up. When we write our email, when we put out our sales copy for the, the item that you're offering in your business, when we uh, show up at the party, when we uh, are in the grocery store with our kids. And what did Waddle say, to go back to Waddle's here for a minute, <clears throat> that if all your actions are efficient ones, then you must get rich. Or if the majority of your actions are. But if the majority of your actions are inefficient ones, then you must remain poor. This is a science. This is a science, okay? So, so all right, looking at that efficiency, Purpose, faith, deep sense of gratitude, bam, efficient. Right now I'm, I'm moving decisively on, on pur purposeful actions. I'm showing up as that in my life and in the world, right? Versus here's the thing which I'm not going to demonstrate, which is the, you know, the degraded state of being and doing and having, right? Because they all go together, right? So I'm not going to demonstrate that. 
And, and so now I, again, back to the question, who am I to, to assume or uh, I'm not worthy or what, what? You could speak in superlatives about yourself all day long and still fall, fall short of what you're capable of. Now you can own that. I just, I just laid that on you, right? That, that you're friggin' awesome. All right. Or you can reject it too. You could say, well, you know, John doesn't really know me. I mean, yeah. well, I've never even met this guy in person, right? He's some talking head on the interwebs. Yeah. You know, on the YouTube thing, on the, the Google machine, right? <laughs> He doesn't really know me. I'm a dastardly, I'm a rotten bastard, right? Okay. You're never going to outperform your self-image, not consistently. You might get little spurts and then fall, right? But that autopilot, that's what makes your decisions, right? That innermost expectation and belief about who you are. That's what makes your decisions. Now, just the fact that you're taking, you know, conscious thought and, and considering well, maybe, maybe, maybe he's right. You know, maybe I'm really selling myself short. Maybe I, I am causative in my life. I mean, I, after all, I've been effective in this area, in this area, which means I'm cause, right? Okay. Maybe I could raise or rehabilitate my standards. Yes, you know what? There was a time when I thought bigger, when I played bigger games, when I wasn't so friggin' afraid. What will they think? What if I fail? What if, what if, what if? There was a time when I just did it. Maybe I can rehabilitate that worthiness, not willingness, worthiness. And willingness goes along with it, okay? Maybe I can, am I still that person? You know, I'm actually an improved version of that. Because not only did I, did, did I do that, there it is, right? There's the success that I have had. But I've also learned stuff since then. <laughs> and I know that I don't know everything. But I'll tell you what, it's nice knowing stuff. I like knowing stuff. And my goodness, that's, you know, it's been some time. I know more stuff now. So who am I to not be worthy? I mean, look, you're going on this, this journey of life and, and advancing. And, and you damn well better be. Because if you're not, you're retreating. If you're not expanding, you're contracting. Nothing rests right? We're either on this upward spiral or the downward spiral. The upward spiral is, is spectacular. Here's thought, feeling, uh, action, result. And then you see that result and you have more thoughts about it and you get emotional state and you get more action, more results and up and up and up you go. But the downward spiral, the lowering of the standards is where we fixate our attention on. That didn't work out. I've got thoughts about it. I feel terrible about it. Let me not act. Let me not reach. Let me not blunder further and uh, go down, right? So, so what do we know about nature, life, right? Uh, everything's expanding uh, until the point of, you know, the life cycle and then, you know, the tree grows up, right? And then and, and that life cycle, it decays and goes down and then new trees grow up. So there's a cycle to all this, but it's not resting. It's either expanding or contracting, growing or disintegrating. Well, which spiral are you on? I would say raise your standards and find ways to acknowledge every little win, every little win, which has been hard for me because I, I um, you know, I, I've got a history of not smelling the roses. So, so we raise our standards and then we acknowledge the little wins and then uh, we can see for ourselves and, and the thoughts and the emotions that go with that, we're moving in the right direction. Every little win. And now we're back in the, the growth cycle, the upward spiral. Creation, expansion, increase. We don't do that by lowering our standards. And so this whole idea came up for me, having talked to some people who didn't wanna limit themselves. But by not setting goals and by not identifying or rehabilitating or claiming standards, high standards, advancement, acceleration, right? By not claiming that, they've actually limited themselves. See that? So, so the idea that I dare not reach because I don't want to limit myself. You see that? Did you just hear it come out of my mouth? 
Wow. There it is. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. If we're considering limits, then we're considering limits. If my attention is fixated on limits, then I get to have limits. But if my attention is, is uh, deliberately refocused again and again on standards, ever increasing standards, I don't need a ceiling. I, I need a floor. I need a stairs case. I need something to step on here. These are the standards. And then I can reach higher with no consideration of what's limit. I, I don't know. Limit. I, I look up, I see the sky. I don't know. Um, and even beyond that, uh, I'm using, you know, physical world stuff now, but I mean, look, even, even with the physical world, we got people now building private rocket ships, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, you know, private internet as well. I know Ingrid's excited about that. Was it Skynet or something? No, not Skynet. That was the Terminator. That was, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Skynet <laughs> out of San Francisco. Yeah. No mistake that they located it there. Um, I'm done talking. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you for being here with me. And, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts about standards and how awesome you are because you are, and I'm talking to you, Missy and Catherine and Daisy and Edward and Ingrid and Lindsay and Virginia. Yeah, you can, you can talk excellently about yourself all day long and still fall short of what you're really capable of. So let's demonstrate that. Floor is open if you guys want to talk or if somebody's got a joke. I, I didn't have a joke yet today. So um, please, Missy. I ain't got no joke. No jokes. No. Um, but I will, uh, picking up on what you said before, because it cannot be stressed enough, really. I mean, most of these guys didn't see me in the other area where I met you. So they, and you, even you do not realize how close I was to flying my plane into a mountain. Um, it was, it was life and death. And I had persevered. I mean, I got perseverance down and fortitude. I, I got those mm -hmm. virtues. But I would, without, but for you, that autopilot that I, now there were medical facts and so on that are in there, but I couldn't cope anymore. So the, it was taking me, and I already been down this road. So I thought, well, this is the road. That's the, I, thought, I thought that's the only road. I became the illness. I was no longer a missy. I was this thing with a with so multi-syllabic thing. And um, you leads it to the camera. And you said, don't do that. Don't do that. I did it two days in a row. I said, don't do that in my meetings the second day. And um, it just, that little correct, was it psycho cybernetics where he talks about the autopilot? That correction, you know, poor Dean Martin's son hit, hit the mountain Something happened with the, he lost his son. He was in the um, Air Force National Guard. He flew into a very famous mountain where Frank Snatch's mother was killed, same mountain. Um, I know all these weird facts, but at any rate, at that moment, had I not made that correction, I don't know if I would be here. I tend to doubt it because I was giving in to the thing. And I have no limitations. I still have physical limitations and things like that. But my mind is bringing me to places that at another time would have, it would have seemed like a case of insanity for me to think these things. There are no limits to my financial. Uh, there is no financial ceiling. I don't have one, but I have specific goals that I'm putting in there. But I, I feel that there's no limit and nobody in here should feel any kind of limit. I don't care what you do, what you think you're going to do, what you haven't done yet. You haven't even gotten there yet. The how's not up to us. The laws are in place for us. The how comes, right? After you decide I'm in a different place, I'm this autopilot's going over here. And if I have to correct that too, I'll correct it again because now I know how. Because you put yourself into a wrong autopilot. And um, I'm just so grateful for these platforms. I really am because it it they are life-saving. And I um I'm so excited for where I'm going. And I Everyone should be, wherever you are, you should still be excited. 
even if I mean I haven't gotten an appointment with somebody in a week. Mm. I don't. It's but I'm I'm gonna. There's no doubt about it. I send them love. In fact, the last time I called somebody, the last time I, the last five people I called, I didn't send them love. Not one person answered. I mm. said, all right. I'm going to send this guy from November love. And he picked up the phone. Uh, so I don't think that's a coincidence. I think he didn't make the appointment, but he picked up the phone. He was very pleasant. He wants to do it. Says he wants to do it, but just the mindset can change everything. That's just a specific problem. I got to follow up on that's nothing, but there is nothing keeping me from anything. But you know what? Yesterday, Shannon said something. I think it was Shannon. She said, Within the laws of reason, if I, I can't become an airplane, I, I can't become a you know a dog. I, within the laws of reason of the of the you know, but other than that, there are no limitations, and everybody in here should be practically jumping up and down. We got another day, in our lives. So sorry for my speech, but that's I'm in a good place. I got so gratitudified. I just I'm just I can't you know. Mm-hmm. there's not enough room in the books for me to write what i'm grat- grateful for so thank you everybody because you've all added to it every single one of you missy thank you. <laughs> you too ingrid boy what a human being you are fantastic human being yeah i think ingrid is amazing and so so uh real ingrid's just so real so here we are loving on Ingrid now. Um, you know, you, you we need to love hands. on each other. We need to love on everybody. That's it. Kumbaya, baby. Yeah. 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 I um, Missy just mentioned, that, you know, she can't be an airplane or a dog or something. OK, well, that's but do you desire to be an airplane or a dog? No, you don't. Right. No, I was thinking, but I saw a show where they do. They walk uh, around with collars on. I mean, oh, that's the well, one with the, yeah, hold on. with the lady that's about. in love with the. Um, with the roller coaster, yeah, that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> well, these people are insane. Be. Yeah, yeah, insanity isn't the goal, at least not in this group. Um, but but uh, but there are things that that you are, you know, you you have a desire, you have a, a you know an idea, uh, seeking fulfillment, right? Uh, one of the examples that I go to, uh, or I wrote about it in Integrity is Everything, is like um, the idea that you can have anything you want, you can't have everything, right? But you got to choose, right? So cho- what do you want? Now, I don't know that I, you know, could be, I want to be like, uh, what were the examples I used? Uh, racehorse jockey and sumo wrestler and astronaut all at the same time, <laughs> right? So, so, right. I'm looking at Lindsay right now. Lindsay, do you have uh, like a burning desire to be a sumo wrestler? Lindsay is like four foot eight and like 80 pounds or something. No, no, not interested, right? No. Okay, but if you were interested, you know, I'm sure there's a way, something, right? Maybe the junior sumo wrestler club, you could start eating. I, I don't know. Uh, but no, it's not in her. You're not interested. Okay. Uh, but my goodness, she, can she do gymnastics? Yeah. Try getting the sumo guy doing that stuff. No, maybe you can roll him down the street or something, but he's not going to do the backflips. So, so anyway, so what do you want? There it is. What do you want? Lindsay, you've got a hot mic. <laughs> oh, I've got a corny joke, but why did the mushroom go to the party? I don't know. He was a fun guy. He was a fun guy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, corny, but you know, yeah. no, no desire to be a sumo wrestler. Okay. But I'm limitless on what other things I can do. Okay. Limited, limitless. <laughs> Right, right. And so these are things that, that you actually have intention on, right? Sumo wrestler is not. Yeah. But these other things, oh, yeah. Okay, great. Let's go do that then. All right, let's be it and then do it. And then you'll have it. Thank you. Jose. Hey, here from uh, Virginia, Pipitone. Hey, good morning. I'll lower my hand. So, what if Lindsay wanted to be a basketball player? That's probably not going to happen as much as her desire. We've all heard stories about, you know, athletes that wanted to be some or potential athletes and they just don't have the physical. I wanted to be a prima donna ballerina. You've met me. I'm five foot ten. It was never, ever, 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 ever was ever going to happen. I maybe could have become 
a ballet instructor and live vicariously, you know, but I chose not to do that. I also wanted to be like Stevie Nicks and sing and that ever, wasn't ever going to happen either. So I find other ways within limitations. So yeah, Missy doesn't want to be those things, but um, I did want to be those things and I was not physically given that. So yeah, did, you, did you dance and did you sing? No, I didn't sing because I don't have a voice, but I did dance for for years as a child and I and as an early teen and I wanted to go on to that, but I grew to be five foot ten. It just wasn't gonna be maybe I could have been a rockette even and then they're not that tall. But but it doesn't matter. What matters is that you do find something else that you can be passionate about or even um, you know in support of that role that you yourself those who can't coach or something you know what is that old saying if you can't do it you coach it right right those who can't do teach but, you know right. yeah so so i could have you know become a maybe had my own dance studio or something but any of it um i do like the uh, everything that we have discussed earlier though and, um, you know, just supporting one another and trying to be, and Missy, Missy, I have just seen her grow so much since she has come into this group and she has become very consistent and persistent. So she doesn't run hot and cold. She is like, you know, the turtle just she keeps going out pacing the hair sort of, and she is going to get to her end goals and her end results because of her uh, belief and persistency. So I, I really admire Missy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Virginia. A question on, on that. So I'm, I'm, I got the idea of, of ballet and singing and uh, the self-expression part of, of dance. And I'm not like a dancer. Okay. But uh, what was, was the, the self-expression part of that gratifying or was it simply about being the, the prima donna, the having roses thrown at you or whatever, whatever happens with that? Yeah, I really love dance. I mean, I was dancing in the living room and performing for my parents <laughs> to, you know, uh, all of their 45 workers and 78s that they would play. Since I was three or four years old, I went around dancing. And um, so I love that. I would have loved to have been a professional dancer of some sort. But mm -hmm. and at the age of, I don't know, somewhere between 12 and 14, very obvious that was not going to, that was not going to be in my destiny. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm thinking of uh, right now in modern times, if people are seeking fame <laughs> and fortune, uh, with whatever their, their act is, right? Here's the dancer on, I don't know, TikTok or something which is an unlikely success story, right? But suddenly they go viral. So, they, I mean, there are ways to achieve fame and fortune. It may be, I, I'm just thinking right now of the entertainment industry, okay? Because you mentioned dancing and singing. Both of those are uh, for the pleasure of the, of the audience, right? Um, uh, but why does a guy like um, uh, Danny DeVito make it in, uh, I mean, does everybody have to be, you know, Robert Redford or I don't know, think of the opposite of, of uh, whatever your thoughts are about a Danny DeVito character. But that character exists nonetheless. Right. There, oh, we need him for that role. Right. You can't put, you know, um, uh, who's the guy I'm just thinking of? Arnold right? Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't put Arnold, right? Or, or uh, I don't know, Brad Pitt, right? So what's the use of Brad Pitt? Does everybody have to be Brad Pitt? No, no. Here's uh, uh, one of the actors I like, uh, Steve Buscemi. Anybody know who Steve Buscemi is? Yeah. yeah. He's awesome. kind of a squirrely guy and bad <laughs> teeth that are like, eh, right? So, uh, <laughs> funny guy. Oh. There, was a, there was a movie called The Imposters. It's got to be 25, 30 years old with Oliver Platt and uh, Stanley Tucci. Steve Buscemi's in that. He plays a, uh, a singer. They're on a, a cruise ship and he's he's a, a suicidal singer named uh, Happy Franks. Uh, hilarious movie. One of my favorite comedies. It's kind of dry, kind of kind of stupid, but I've just watched it like I don't know how many times. Anyway, The Imposters. Hilarious. All right, Virginia, um, perhaps on our Be Heard session today, you can give us a little demo on the ballet and singing simultaneously. 
<laughs> okay. Years ago, yeah, I would dance in the living room still as an adult and do my whatever they were called, grand jotes and stuff, but not happening at this 40 extra pounds that I'm carrying today. So, okay. But thank you. You're, you're welcome. Be acting, I'm not sure. Maybe uh, these yeah. would take that. Sure. Lindsay? Just as a comeback to that, if I wanted to be a basketball player, which I just never, but I do love roller coasters. Not that I want to be one, but I was the only one that, <laughs> like Johnson, I don't want to be one, but I do want to ride every one I could possibly get to, but I was never tall enough. And then, so I waited until I was 18 and signed a waiver and rode everyone since then. <laughs> so, and I'm technically not tall enough to sit in the front seat of a car, but state of Alabama issued me a driver's license. So there's ways around things if you really want it. Right. Just say it. You persevered, right? You're like, hey, you know, here I am. I'm, uh, you know. I'm roller coaster, damn it. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I, I, I thought maybe I'd have four inches surgically removed off of uh, my legs, maybe, you know, to make me shorter. And then I maybe dance, but that, that has that technology doesn't exist yet, I don't think. No, Lindsay doesn't no. know the word. No, sorry, John. Lindsay does not know, understand the meaning of the word. No, which is what makes Lindsay go. Lindsay, if she wanted to be a basketball player, she would find a way to do it. She, she could play around. basketball. She'd go play basketball right now. I don't know that that means it's going to be in the NBA or something, right? Okay. Although maybe she, she could run in between. The... New NBA. She would do it. She can this. There's nothing that can stop this girl. There's nothing. She's a force unto herself. And she's a. Uh, don't say she can't be a basketball player because she could be if she wanted to. Believe me, she could be. Oh, here's the thing. The, 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 uh, the slam dunk, okay, I'm not the sports guy, okay, but the slam dunk from the really tall guy, right, that, that's real. That happens. But I'll tell you what else happens, right? Those three pointers from half court, the, the, uh, the maneuvering, and, and uh, I was just thinking, you know, in a funny sense, you know, uh, Lindsay could run under the legs of, you know, the tall guy, right, Does go right in between them. But um, but no, if the statistics were there, like if, if she really was like the, the basketball queen or something, there would be a way for her to to participate, to express herself, to compete and do very well. Right. I mean, if she's accurate as as a friggin' laser with her, you know, her three pointers, who the hell needs to slam dunk when you got when you got Lindsay over here who can hit that basket from the other side of the friggin' room? Somebody I mean, could the, invent her special sneakers like. Yeah, I've never, I've never not been good at three points. I have slam dunked before, but I was standing on my shoulders. Oh, right, right. So, but, but, uh, right. And all yeah. of this is rhetorical. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah so, but, so but the point is, if she did have, you know, like that was her life's mission or something is, is basketball, there'd be a way for it to get done. The point is that it's not her life mission and it's not getting done and nobody cares. Right. But. So, so this is the, the thing, right? So yeah, physical limitations, uh, you know, Virginia is taller than the average ballet person and her voice doesn't sound like Stevie Nicks, which is probably a good thing. And uh, <laughs> I mean, how many Stevie Nicks do you need? Uh, these days, I'll tell you what, I, I turn on, I get in my wife's car and she's got the pop radio, uh, you know, Sirius XM uh, playing and every song sounds like some juvenile teenage girl or something whispering into a microphone uh you know about premarital sex or whatever they're talking about I, 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 what is this this is this is popular this is pop music uh, how many times do i have to hear this and it's the same shit over it and I, you know what granted other people could come and they could listen to my musical selection and you're like john i can't even hear the difference between that metal band and that metal band well it's just it's not your thing right so i get it that it's very subjective um what was I talking about? I don't even know. I'm rambling now. All right, guys. Any other thoughts on any of this? I'm only speaking about Lindsay's character. And we mm -hmm. all have to develop that part of us that there is no, no. There's no, no. You can't change your sex. But other than that, you can. there's a way around, a way through, a way over. You can, if it's your burning desire and you persevere, I think is that word you said, you will get there. 
Just ask Theodore Roosevelt. He lived four lives in 60 years. Wow, what a guy. And he wasn't confused about his gender. So there's that. So, uh... <laughs> God bless America, or what's left of it. Um, all right. Anybody else? Well, I love you guys. Uh, thank you for being here with me. I'm going to be back in uh, a few hours. So I'll see you at 6 p.m. If you got some stuff you want to talk about, I'm here to listen on our Be Heard event tonight. So um, 